folks. Welcome back to Face to Facts. I am Nick Face. It's good to see you once again. We apologize for not being able to be with you uh, recently. It's been a very hectic <laughs> month and a half-ish around here for myself and our sports zone programs that we have. But it's nice to be back here. Sitting to my left today is Tom Smith. Welcome back, Tom. Thank you. Phil Healy back in uh, the Phil Healy chair. Welcome back, the hot gentlemen. Seat. The hot Thank seat. you for having me. There's been a lot that's going on in the, in the lovely land of sports since we've been with you last, but we're going to start first with the team that deserves to be start for, started first with, and that is your Boston Bruins. The Bruins will be opening up their playoff series, which will be starting with the Toronto Maple Leafs on Thursday night. That is for round one. Hopefully we have some more. That will be uh, more games after this series. But, Tom, you're our go-to hockey guy from everything. How are we feeling leading up to this series against the Toronto Maple Leafs? Oh, I'm feeling good. No. I'm feeling good. Oh, I thought you were. Okay. No, no, no. no. You're I'm feeling good no, about I'm the feeling series. Good. Feeling good. Phil, how are you feeling about well, it? Well, I'm feeling great about Tom feeling good. Oh, good. I'm so, <laughs> so glad. Yeah, I'm so glad to hear that. Reassure us. Give us a little bit of an inside scoop on how you uh, are looking at this series. Well, where do I start? We've had a uh, couple uh, – Playoff series against um, the Maple Leafs. One that's the third year in a row it's been the Maple Leafs to start. Oh, in the yep. opening round, really? Yes. Because mm -hmm. I remember. Oh wow, I remember it was last yeah, year. Yeah, because uh, the 2016-17 series was the one that they almost didn't make it by. Okay. Um, and that was the one where, you know, everybody in Toronto was going crazy because they thought Toronto had won, and then oh, Bergeron the put the knife in there through the their hearts. Three goals. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The three goals in like the last minute and a half yeah. to tie the game, and then they won it in overtime. That shot from Bergeron was crazy. Right. It was like, yeah. Right, yeah. Some things are common in life death taxes and the Boston Bruins beating the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, yeah, I yeah, mean, in the first round. And, you know, we walked all over them last year, uh, last season. There's so. a big difference, though. I, you, you know. John Tavares is now a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he's an excellent player. He is an excellent player, but we, the Bruins went uh, either two and two against them this season in the regular season, or three and one in the regular season. So, I mean, we still kind of have Toronto's number, and um, I personally think this is going to be a tougher series than it was the last two years. But just you know, my thoughts on. But you know what, Tavares doesn't have any playoff experience. That's right. This will be his first playoff really experience. He doesn't hasn't had a, a taste of the. Uh, of the playoffs, and you know what? His uh, old team, the New York Islanders, have finally made it into well, the playoffs since uh, since he, you know, was drafted by them. So, right. yeah. here's why I think it's going to be a little bit tougher of a series, and the reason being is because the Bruins are once again limping into the playoffs. They did it last year, and they've done it for so many years. The matinee game that they ended their season with against the Lightning was embarrassing. Tuca was horrible. And he's supposed to be your starting lead goalie in the playoffs. What's it going to take here? I'm, I mean, I, I felt so good about Rask as, as the Bruins had such a good ride when Pasternak got out. Well, we get 20 consecutive points. And I'm very high on the Bruins. Don't get me wrong, folks. But it's been about 50 years since the Maple Leafs have beat the Bruins here. Is history going to catch up to us here? No, I'm not worried. That game, um, that game against the Lightning to end the season um, – I don't think they were really trying too hard. I, th I think they were trying to avoid being injured because um, they actually are finally going into playoffs fully healthy. Was uh, anything at stake? Knock on wood. Nothing was at stake yeah. on Nothing that game. Nothing was at stake. So it they... was just a game that I, I wasn't really looking at it as a as, as like a, a, sh a scoring kind of game. Yeah, yeah. But on, on a defensive note, it needed to be more crisp. And your goalie, which was Rask in there, oh, that's giving up. What was it? it actually ended up being five goals because one of them was an open net. Yeah. Still, yeah. unacceptable. Well, I mean, if you look at it this way, if they actually put some effort in, they would have been 3-1 and one against the Lightning because they most likely would have won because we had the Lightning's number all season except for that first game of the season that we played them. Um, so I'm not really too worried about that game that they they finished the season strong after you know losing a few games between – uh, the last couple of games of the season and that hot streak that they were on. Um, the, t the team is looking good. They're fully healthy. Um, and I'm just not really worried. Okay, so how many games do you think it's going to take? 
I still think it's going to be, you know, a hard-fought battle, uh, but I don't think it's going to go all seven. I think it's going to go six. Okay. And the Bruins do have home ice, folks, so that's another uh, yep. nice little factor there. So they'll open up uh, Thursday night, which will be at home for game one. The healthy scratch it pairs in this lineup is going to be David Backus. Are you surprised by that or no? No. no. He's had no. a bad year, hasn't he? Uh, he's just one of those guys that, you know, is is kind of just there, and you, you kind of have him on the ice, and, you know. I liked him seeing him more as the enforcer as Johansson and who else came? Um, Coyle. And Coyle came from, there, from the trade deadline. But I think I'd still play Backus over Johansson. Well, it was it was a tough uh, it was a tough trade over for uh, Johansson. He was um, injured for the most part after <laughs> after he started playing for us. Yeah. Uh, he only played in two games. Yep. And before getting injured, and then uh, he's he came back for I don't know four or five games. So I mean, I, I'm not too surprised that we haven't seen much from him. Um, but he's definitely a talented guy, and he's definitely a guy you want on the ice in the playoffs. We will have two guys that will also be out probably for the play all the playoffs. We'll have to see. One of which is definitely David uh, – not David, uh, Kevin Miller. Kevin Miller is out. He's just injury prone. It's, it's unfortunate because the Bruins could use him, but once again, it's just not going to be there for Miller. And Sean Corrali is still out. Sean Corrali would be nice to get back for that fourth line. That fourth line was re really worked well together. It's been a combination of Corrali, Nola Chari, and Nordstrom a little bit. Who was your other guy that was there? I do like uh, the, another kid that just caught up, Clifton, Connor Clifton. Connor Clifton. He's looked and, very uh, good. And Coolman's really good, too. Yes, I liked what I've seen so far from those guys. Um, what I also like about the team is, you know, you have um, a lot of guys with playoff experience. Yep. Um, I, I don't... I mean, I do, I do like the healthy scratch of David Backus, but um, you know, I haven't really seen too much from Nordstrom nope. lately. And that's my, that, I said, you know what? I've seen a little bit of a spark from Backus. Might have been. I think we'll see a little bit of the flip flop game. Yeah, I mean, I, I would prefer to see Backus on the ice for this series. Just you know, get the little enforcer, enforcer going, um, and you know, have Nordstrom on the ice if you know. If they make it to the second round and either, I mean, Columbus and Tampa are both fast teams, so I would I would prefer to see Nordstrom on the ice for that yeah. second round if okay. we make it. Um, but yeah, you know, you got Coyle, who's been on Minnesota, who's made the playoffs multiple times. Yep. So you have um, a little bit of and Johansson, there. who's on New Jersey, and if you know if you know hockey, then you know the history of the New Jersey Devils, and you know they've hardly ever missed the playoffs. Yep. At least, you know. The other thing I want to mention, too, so Tom and I both have the Bruins advancing into the next round. Um, do you have them, too? I don't know. I don't know. Did you quote what Tom yeah, quotes? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah, right? I'm feeling uh, pretty good about yeah, Tom. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Well, what seed are they? They're, they they are, are the two seed two in the seed. Yeah. Yeah. They are the two seed. So what's, what I don't like about how the playoff alignment goes is you have your Atlantic division battling it out to figure out who's going to play the Metropolitan. Whoever battles it out in those ends up going to the Eastern Conference, yep. and then you go to the Stanley Cup. So same with how the Western. Oh, Conference so it's is. not just fully. No, like, it's not. You have four different conferences in each league, basically, right? Or two different ones. Two. Two. Two within the Eastern, two in the Western. Oh, weird. So man. you battle those out to see what happens. It's basically a one on through eight of, seeds. Okay. Yep. Top of each. Yep. Uh, division meets in the conference final. That's exactly correct. Oh, yes. that's weird. When did they start doing that? Uh, two years ago, three years ago. It's it's a recent. Longer than that, or two, no? two thousand. Uh, I think two thousand ten. Oh, that's actually much. Two thousand eleven. Decade then. No, the Boston Bro. The, when we won the Stanley Cup, it wasn't like that. Because well, well, they've realigned divisions. That's what they've done. Yeah. Like the Red Wings are a part of the Metropolitan, I believe. No, oh, they're part of the Atlantic. Atlantic, excuse me. And they yes. used to be in the Western Conference. Right. So they've been a little bit of a realignment there, but. Yeah. All right, so if we f both have the Bruins going against the next round, that puts the Bruins against the Lightning. Dun, 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 what do Maybe. we think? Maybe. Maybe. What do you mean? Uh, I think get. Columbus is going to put up a fight against oh, Tampa. look at this guy. Do you have Columbus beating the Lightning? The Columbus. Sure. I, have, I have three brackets, and I have, I have Columbus beating the Lightning in at least one of them. Wow, 
I mean, that would just be amazing if that happened. Do you just think that they're – you think Columbus can get through them? I think – if there's any team that could get through Tampa and in the Eastern Conference that are in the playoffs right now, I think it could be Columbus. So if if that doesn't happen and the Bruins have to face Tampa, is this three years in a row where the Lightning take the Bruins out of this? No. You think the Bruins are going to go through this? I still think the Bruins are going to go through Okay, it. so if you get them through the second round, who's, who's the third stop? Well, it could be a combination of – or not, not a combination, be the Capitals, but it right? could be the Capitals – could be the Penguins, it could be the Islanders, or it could be the Hurricanes. I think I could see the Bruins and the Islanders as my third round get to the Stanley Cup match. That is one of my thoughts. I also think I was I think I have the Penguins in one of my brackets as well. If I'm gonna go out on a limb and I'm gonna say what I feel the Stanley Cup would look like that that would be Calgary and the Bruins. Um, I had a hard time deciding between Vegas and Calgary because, I mean, there are two teams in the Western Conference that have the biggest history of choking whenever they make the playoffs. And one of those teams is Calgary. Correct. And the other team is San Jose. And you can also make the case that the Bruins have a little bit of that too because they haven't really not got, gotten another Stanley Cup since 2011. That is true. So oh, was it 2013? 2013, they had the Blackhawks. They yeah. made the Black it to Hawks the finals. They made it to the finals. They, they didn't yeah. win there. So that's my thoughts on what it looks like here. Give us a little bit of a rundown of some other series that you're um, highlighting. Uh, there's the Dallas and Nashville series. Okay. Um, Who you have there? Dallas. Okay. Um, and then there's also the Vegas and San Jose Sharks. Vegas Golden Knights and San Jose Sharks, which is the rematch of the Western Conference Final last year. Correct. So that is going to be a big first round there. Um, I would definitely pay attention to that one. Okay. Um, and then there's the Winnipeg Jets and the St. Louis Blues, which could be a tough one. I have, the, I have um, what do you call it? I have the Winnipeg Jets in that series. I That one... I had a hard time with, I think. That, that was such a good series between Winnipeg and Vegas last year. I, that, that, that was, was one of the best playoff series. It was fantastic well, it's kind of for hockey. Winnipeg, to be honest. Yes. Although, it is, Vegas but is a fun story. St. Louis has been a tough team to beat in the last half of the season. So, True. I mean, it could be, it, that one could go either way. And then it was um, Calgary and... Um, Damn it, Tom. I'm blanking. This is, blank. this is your thing. Don't let, let me come in and, and save the day on hockey. Oh, uh, Calgary and Colorado. That's who it was. Calgary and Colorado. That's right. That's exactly who it was. So we're looking forward to the NHL playoffs. We hope that you are as well. Begins uh, Wednesday of April 10th. 10th week for the NHL. The Bruins will start their series on Thursday, April 11th. That will be at the Garden for 7 o'clock against the Maple Leafs. We'll stay in the Garden. The Celtics have just about wrapped up their season. They did last night, yeah. So that was wrapped up. With, yeah. Yeah, thanks for all that effort <laughs> we want to just put in when the show was recorded. So congrats. Last night. <laughs> um, last night could they were, be. Uh, they could have figured it out. No, last April night. April 4th. The fortnight, Celtics played who last night again? Uh, they played the Wizards. That's correct. And they won 116 wait, you, to 110. Wait a minute. Were you testing me or were you legitimately asking? I was testing you. I was testing you. They were, what was it, what was the phone? 116 to 110, 110 was the yeah, score. Yeah. I guess the big question here leading into the playoffs, we know that the Celtics are going to be playing the Pacers. That'll begin the weekend, Phil, yeah, that's of we April 13th. Uh, <laughs> oh, I have to, to think that. sometimes. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, it's either Saturday I just or Sunday. I changed one my one feelings a little bit on the Celtics, to your amazement. I've changed no, my I, feelings I a little bit. No, I can see you because it's... You have to get to that point. If you can date back an episode that we did in in February, right when the Celtics were on that West Coast trip. Let me just look through my searches here. (laughs) (laughs) The X factor to how the Celtics are going to do well here in the playoffs comes from one particular player in my mind. I feel the glue is Al Horford. Mm -hmm. Okay, You need Al to do his thing, but it's Gordon Hayward. Yeah, he's very important. The past month, it's been a a rejuvenation of Gordon Hayward a little bit. He's been... uh, a, the player that I think the Celtics have w- w- uh, wanted when they signed him. Yeah. 
Now, Marcus at... Smart is another one that's important, and oh. Marcus Smart's a little banged up, but he, Danny yeah, Ainge he... gave the word that it looks like Smart will be okay yeah. leading into the playoffs. So I think the Celtics can absolutely get past the Pacers. Absolutely can. What do you feel? No, yeah, I think they definitely can, and I think the Pacers are a good test in the first round. Yeah. As, like, they, I mean, they don't have Victor uh, Odilippo. Odilippo. Yeah. Oda, yeah, I can never. Odilippo. Odilippo. Yeah. Yep. I never pronounced his name. Huh? That's no, big. it is crazy. I mean, I felt bad because they were doing pretty well when they had him. And then he went down. It's like one of those crazy injuries where it's like, oh, there goes the knee. And you're right. like, oh, that's why you like. Right. That's why we watch. It's like, oh, thank God that wasn't my leg. But, <laughs> uh, but they, yeah, they, it's, uh, but they're doing pretty well. The Pacers are a good team. Uh, they, They've always been tough against the Celtics. Yeah, they really have. And uh, for. For, yeah, for a while, for, for like the longest like, time. Yeah. Even like the bird parish days, like Chuck Purse and Reggie Miller. thorn in the side. Sure. Uh, but I think it'll be a good test against, like, because the Pacers, they don't really quit. And they're pretty, they play decent D, and they, they pass the ball around. So that's the thing. How many games do you think test. the series is going to go? Again, this is your four and your five yeah. seed going Yeah, four and five seed. Uh, and Celtics have home court. They have home court. That's it's big. a seven-game series. Yep. I mean, I could see four or five games. Like, I would like to see the Celtics take care of them, and I think they can. Uh, and I think if they have everyone with them, it, it'll be easy. I think Baines is back, I Yes, believe. he is. Yes, and he is. And hopefully he doesn't, uh, you know, strain anything or anything goes crazy, because we need him. Uh, maybe not necessarily for this series, but you need him for Philly. Uh, you need him for the Bucks. Uh, for Toronto, not as much, I don't think, because they don't, well, I mean, they don't have a, they're not as big man dependent. It's not bad to have them, but they'll probably need right. more speed when they're going against the Raptors. The Celtics get through Indiana. Mm -hmm. Who's the next destination? Uh, most likely Toronto. Okay. Most likely, I believe, because that's how I think Toronto's second. Which, uh, no, actually, I'm sorry, uh, the Bucks. It'll be the Bucks. It'll be the Bucks, I believe. Last season, it went seven games. Yeah, it did, and they and didn't the have Kyrie. Did win, and they did yeah. not have Kyrie. That is correct. And they had a chance to win it in. Milwaukee in game six a little bit, and mm. they the they Celtics really struggled on the road. They, if you remember in that series they, against Milwaukee, they I, I mean struggle well, might be a strong word. They struggled on the road that entire playoffs. I, I'm pretty sure because I think they went over until the, the first, last game. Uh, actually, the opening series they didn't win a game on the road. They came close two games. Yeah, out of three, I think well, one of the games they just kind of. Maybe 10 points. But against Philly, sorry, I'll give you the history. Yeah. Philly, they took, I think, the first game. And they did. And ended up winning like four out of five. I think it was five games, as a matter five of fact, Five games they went Philly. to. They yes. lost one yes. game in Philly by like 10 or 15. I am confident that the Celtics can do fine in the playoffs if they do not have to play Toronto. If they have to no. play Toronto, I think it just ends right there. That could be your Eastern Conference final. I think it might be. Yeah. I think that might. Because I, I think Milwaukee and people who bring up, like, the last time they played Milwaukee, the, yeah. the last big game, they lost by a point in Milwaukee. Right. They played a good game. They play them well. Huh? They play Milwaukee typically well. Yeah, they so, did. But yeah. also in that game, they didn't have Gordon Haywood. They didn't. For that That's game. Right. And they played them right until the end. And the uh, Celtics gave away that game in a lot of ways. Milwaukee won it, of course. Correct. But, yes. uh by one point, they could easily have that game. So that's the difference right now with what I feel with the Celtics and the Bruins is I think the Celtics are on the high right now riding into yeah. their playoff. The Bruins kind of dipped a little bit. I just hope that isn't a cross. I just hope I, that isn't a concern. I just don't. I, I don't I just Am don't. I reading too much into it? Into yeah, Ross I mean, struggling? It, I mean, Not it's only back been. back into hockey, but. It's only been like, they only had eight more games left in the season after that hot streak. Yeah. Or eight, eight or ten. Um. It's, I just can't stand it when I see a team that's about to go into the playoffs just kind of like pack it in. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. That's when bad habits come into play. That's when you get out of your, your typical speed and your typical way that you go about attacking a game or stuff. I don't want to see that happen with the Bruins. And I'm seeing a, definitely a different team than I've seen with the Celtics, at least at least the good majority of the season. And I'll even say with the Celtics, not to – I mean, from what I've heard and – what I hear from you guys, like the talent level, the ceiling's much higher with the Seas as opposed with the, the Bruins. Not to say there isn't talent on the Bruins. I think there was more expectation for the Celtics to yeah. get to, everybody thought they were going to get to the finals this year. Yeah. Going into the season where NBA finals, it's going to be Golden State and the Celtics. Are we still singing that song and dance right now? I mean, you could, I could see the Celtics get to a final. You could probably argue. I, I could argue. argue. No, you I could argue it. Yeah, I no, I think you could. Yeah, and you I, think if, uh, I think Toronto will be the biggest uh, block. 
Yep. And then I think Toronto is a good team. So if the Celtics do and get past Kawhi Toronto, Leonard, which I still think good. is a, it, it's going to be tough, who are they facing in the finals? Is it Golden State again, or is it somebody different? I mean, probably. I mean, people weirdly bring up things like Portland as a big player, and Portland's decent enough. Mm -hmm. But I, it's you know, it's going to be. You know what? Hey, you might get Houston in there. Who knows? You could. I don't if uh, if Chris uh, Paul if Chris Paul thank you Chris Paul Paul Chris and Chris Paul, Paul Chris Paul Chris uh, is healthy and he's with Chris Chris and they're, Paul, Paul yeah Chris Chris Paul Paul uh, if, if Harden is good if they're you know if they're working well if Houston's doing it they they could you know do work and San Antonio always a good I think wild the Celtics card. have a chip on their shoulder too a little bit of an attitude that you know what our season wasn't super great but here we are it's playoff it's time the second let's flick the switch like, people doubted us yeah. yeah like in hockey in a way it's that's the helpful. second season no it's how the Red be. Sox won this past year yeah. I remember crapping on them the, the, the end of the season oh, of last year too man it helped out so but it definitely you know well, yeah, no, no that's the it. real reason they oh that's a good transition yeah. we like oh, those we around here too because to your favorite folks, team it's it's at the moment. If I don't look the same, I do look the same. But <laughs> three and nine? Are you kidding me? Oh. Are you kidding me? Three and nine. They're just getting those losses out of the way. What an embarrassment. I've already started the whole fire Corrid thing on Twitter. Oh, my God. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. Really? Yeah. When did you? Why? Um, well, <laughs> because... You, yeah. he, this is my interpreter. He yeah, speaks yeah, sure, for me. Sure, sure. Go ahead. So what we were talking about... Uh, yesterday was that the reason why the Red Sox won all their World Series is because, well, three out of the four World Series that they won were was the year that they had a new manager. The first year manager. Yeah. yeah. So, 04 was Francona. Yep. 2013 Grady, was fired. John John Do Nothing Farrell. Yep. After, and then yeah. 2018 <laughs> is Alex. Oh, don't worry. Take off the whole spring. Doesn't matter. 2018, we win a championship. Who cares about 29? Cora. Just... There's a little bit of a sure, of an sure. in between there yeah. that can get stretched and stretched and stretched. Sure, keep court. going. You got so. time. <laughs> Maybe uh, not really, but well, go ahead. <laughs> no, I uh, listen. I'm one of those not fairweather fans, but I'm like we've had it pretty good. And as much as I was a rabid jerk growing up about all these, you know, because I, I grew up in the '90s and '80s and uh, with all those crummy the, teams, crummy and some decent teams that just didn't get over the hump. We and saw it. We saw it at the end of it, at least. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. But yeah, you're pretty much there. That like, was you, spoiled rotten brats. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's exactly. kind of it's weird. And I'm like, hey man, this is all gravy. Uh, but you know, we're not we're not just spoiled rotten brats. We're spoiled rotten brats that will remember all these championships. There are some kids out there that are gonna have like no recollection it, of it. Expect yeah. it every well, that's, year. Talk about the Pats, man. Not to take all mm -hmm. of our teams at championship caliber. Oh, just wait until it all comes crumbling down, if it hasn't already. No, 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 no. But, we don't. We don't want to get off that. <laughs> what are you that, talking that, about? Yeah. That's not gonna that happen. Mountain. Yeah. That mountain's gonna be up there for as ever and ever. But you make a good point. Like they did, kind of come in, kind of flying low, expecting. Well, I was skeptical. I was skeptical all of spring training. I know spring training it's doesn't training, mean yeah. anything, but I mean. But yes, it does. But it does because they barely won in a game. They, they, they barely they won any games. They had such a good spring last year yeah. out of the start, and it didn't transition over. That's the, I don't know what the staff is trying to do to these guys, but it's don't worry. We're not going to build you up for the season. Take off as much as you can. The last week of spring, oh, we'll start your throwing programs and getting up to speed. But explain to me, this is my biggest thing. Like, I mm -hmm. can understand the pitchers not being ready because of the World Series. You, you know, sure. I get that. It's a safety thing with the arm. But your communication in the outfield, how can you not open up your freaking mouth and say, I got the ball? That was that Yeah, how was many bad. drops have they been? Get Jackie Bradley off this baseball team. Wow, he no. does nothing for this baseball team. Nothing. Oh my God. That one in, uh, was it Arizona? Let's get was... that. We're going to cut that and so, just put that in a package. We need to cut that. So make sure that we put that in. Yeah. What has he done on this team? I could give two craps if he could catch the ball and jump on a wall. Mookie can do the same, and so can't Ben Intendi. You put JD to left, you put Mookie to center, somebody else to right, and you get another person to swing the damn bat. I don't want to wear JD Martinez down, though. Oh, that's a good he point. hits better when he's in the field. But, but how, how he's also he hitting better now. Yeah. yeah, but he's played the outfield a good majority. Look at the trip. He was in right field a little bit, left field. He's played at least four games already in the season in the outfield, and he's not bad. Yes, he did drop a ball in the left field. Again, I blame that again. 
on being unprepared. But Preferred. why do some of these guys have entitlement? What has Jackie Bradley done? What does Nunez do for this team? I mean, last year, I mean, you go back a couple, like three or four months. I'm so sad. 2018 World Championships. You've won nothing in 2019. It's a new season. Cora comes out and says, oh, we're not going to change anything. You know, we were great this year, so we're not turning the page on, on, on the book. you got to turn the page. It's a whole new year, guy. Rant over. Now you can uh, continue. What do you say? <laughs> I don't know where to start. Yeah, I, mean, I, go, I, I mean, if we can take any positive out of this, you know, terrible, terrible season so far, um, the, the bullpens look good. They've had a good start to the season uh, than they did last year. And, I, yeah, I know that they were, you know, the starting pitchers and the rotation got beat up on so far in the last 12 games. But, um, I mean, I think the bull, I think part of the reason why the bullpen is so good this year is because I, I feel like they were kind of uh, relying more on Joe Kelly and Craig Kimball last year to close out games. And I think – they, um, you know why your bullpen hasn't been so great? I mean, has been so good, rather? Because you haven't been exposed yet. That's my thought. You, you really want to have Heath Hembry come in in an eighth inning and, and, and with the guys on base and get the job done? That's the issue. You have Brazier and Barnes, and you know the stance on, on Matt Barnes. I mean, I still think he's as soft as a baby's bottom. I like Brazier. I think Brazier ha has a lot of upside because he's a bulldog. Okay, but if, if... I still feel even as much as we don't have our love for Kimbrell, he should still be there in that bullpen. If Mar Matt Barnes is soft as a baby's bottom, then how come he has two saves and two of the three Red Sox wins? I'd have put Luck on his side. i put Luck on his side. Maybe he did turn a corner and figure it out. Kudos to him if he did. But I want to see what the big picture of the season looks like at the end before I start handing out my trophies to Matt Barnes. Are you kidding me? I'm not saying to hand out your trophies to Matt Barnes. I'm just saying he's one of the better-looking uh, What a nice week you had. Let me right see now. it over a month. Let me see it over a season, sir. Because at any point, he can revert back to Mr. Walkaholic. He could. Wild thing. You make my heart sing. He could. So do you think that I should stop overreacting? Is that what you're thinking? Even though it's three and nine, I've never. There has not been a team that's been three and nine who's ever made a playoff yet. Could change. Yeah, I mean they certainly have the talent. It's not like their lack of of any sort of talent or depth. It's just you know who knows what they're just not. They don't have the desire. They don't have the bite. You know, they. Well, I think they're all worried about getting paid. I mean, maybe. Yeah, we sure. saw Bogarts get his extension to start the season, which I do like. I like that extension he a, a lot. He hit in the opener. It's cheaper than what I expected. Tom and I the, talked the about that. Um, the Chris Sale extension, I, I don't like. He hasn't really um, stepped up at all. I'm concerned because there's a guy that I think you needed to see a little bit more before you handed out the big bucks to. And I feel that that needed to be done because you had a big question mark on what happened in the second half of the season. He broke down. Chris Sale is a very tall, lanky pitcher, and he just he, he doesn't look like he's going to last the full season anymore. He's not even throwing hard anymore. He's no. throwing about 90. His velocity was a little up in the in opening His day. His three starts has just been but, awful. Yeah. I'm, su I'm very concerned with him. I'm not so much concerned on the Porcillo, Evaldi, Price front. I actually think David Price is going to have a really good season, believe it or not. He had a better start. He holds his, all the uh, cards, Phil. He had yeah. a better start, his second start. Yep. So that's my outlook on what I would see from the team. they got to start winning some games here, folks, because the last time the Red Sox were 2-10, and 10, you had the 2011 team that lost on the very last game of the season and did not get into the playoffs. So you better start getting your acts together now because if you don't, it's going to be a very long season, and fans are going to get very frustrated from what they see. We fans expect a lot around here, so they better change quick. You know who looked really good in the field in, at opening day was uh, Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia is back. What will happen with Pedroia? I do I have know. to tell you. I know you know my stance on it. Red Sox need Pedroia right now. Oh, they need him to hit. Yeah, they like, do. And he wasn't really opening. Like, 
No, he went 0 for yesterday. No, yeah. he went to hit right. one did for he, four. He, 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 he hit a ball down the right field side. Yeah, oh, it was man. a nice piece. And maybe he'll, I mean, because he hasn't really been in game action for like almost a year and a half, two years. So. Well, I got I got to say, I mean, the Red Sox are playing so poorly right now, and we got bedtime Dave uh, commentating. I fell asleep for the entire ninth inning in opening day. <laughs> Can't stand Dave O'Brien. <laughs> oh, Dave O'Brien. I mean, I didn't mind him as a, uh, I think he's a nice radio guy. Yeah. Yeah, Not because radio's guy. put you guys Bring put you back to Don Orsillo. Uh, I we want Don back. Love Don. I love Eck. I just want. I do maybe, like Eck. Eck I like Eck a lot, Eck and I like Ryan. Remy too. And you don't like not to go back to Celtics, but you don't like Scalabrini as Can't a guy. Can't stand Scalabrini. Oh my God, that breaks my heart. <laughs> or Sherrod Blatley, or a a Sherrod. I like a Sherrod, but oh, Kyle okay. Draper oh, is Kyle the Kyle Draper. One. That's right. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Shouldn't say I don't like them. I just don't agree you don't like with them how they call a game. Yeah. Yeah, I don't agree how they call a game. Yeah. So. That's our stance here for Face the Facts for today. The last thing we're going to say is, yes, Gronk has retired. As he says right now, he's done. We'll see. I, I'm leaning towards if the Patriots need him, they'll place a call and they could get him back. But we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. We wish you well, Gronk. Do whatever you'd like to do. But it is what it is. Yeah, he, so. I mean, he gave him his body. Sure did. Yeah. Sure did. We'll see you next time here on another episode of Face the Facts. Goodbye. Adios. Adios.